Hi, welcome to the Northwest Carp and Angler's Diary fishing blog. For this episode, I'm back on the River Severn and we're going to take a look at the basics of barbel fishing. Now, barbel fishing isn't difficult, but if you've never done it before, the first question you're going to ask is where do you place your baits? So let's take a look at that first. Okay, so I like to divide the river into sections and what I'm looking for is nice steady flow. So when you get those nice smooth bits of water which run at a gentle walking pace, they're the kind of areas I'm looking for. I tend to avoid areas that are rough, like white water, very shallow and rocky. They're not the areas you want to fish, but if you find one of them, use it as a section marker and then as it deepens out, as it goes downstream, that's the area you want to be looking in. And these little shallow areas where the rocks are, I use as dividers, so I'll find one in one point and then further downstream I'll find another and I'll fish the area in between they're the places that you should be looking for barbel now I'm on a stretch of river here where there's a shallow section so let's take a look okay so what you're looking at here is a shallow section of river you can see where it's deeper here let's put my finger in front of the camera where are we this section here where my finger is is deeper and then it runs up into a shallow section which is here see where all the water's rough now the rough water is like a section marker for me and I'll avoid those if I can but the slower deeper water here on the left here are the kind of areas I'll target when I'm looking for barbel let's take a look at another area okay so let's have a look at this area this is Atchin Bridge and this is another area I use as a boundary for a marker. There's shallow water here and it runs into deeper, smoother water over there. But let's take a look first at the shallow water. Okay, as you can see, the water here on the far side is really, really fast. Uh, the river's got a bit of flow on it at the moment. I think it rained yesterday and the water level is slightly higher than it normally is. But you can see, we just pan around a bit. fast and quite shallow okay so as we come off the shallow area let's have a look downstream now as you can see the river deepens out as we come off that fast bit flowing this way it goes into lovely deeper water and it's perfect it's got just the right flow it's a steady walking pace there's no boils on the surface to indicate that there's boulders or anything like that down there. It's just nice smooth gravel. Now, this section of Ratcham, 30 odd years ago, it used to be match fished regularly. And this is how I learnt about it, by reading writings of uh, a local guy by the name of Mal Story. And he used to win matches on this section, tun-up barbel matches. Uh, the matches are long finished, but the barbel is still here. Okay, so this stretch of Atchim here, it's lovely water down there, behind the trees, going down. Um, it's prime barbel water on the middle seven, and it's well worth a look. If you're new to barbel fishing and you want to catch your first barbel, it's definitely the place to go. Now, you can get a ticket from Lim Angling Club. Um, they're quite expensive to join these days, Lim, but they do offer a river and canals ticket which just covers the rivers and the canals, so you can have access to this section for 40 quid, which is an absolute bargain. So, the Mangan Club, well worth the trip. Uh, there is another section of river further up, if you're new to fishing. Um, Shrewsbury Angling Club, they were good enough to put my videos on their new Facebook page. They're a newly formed club, uh, only one or two years old, but they've got a section of river called Preston Boats. Now, I'm not a member of Shrewsbury, but I do know the Preston Boat section from years of old, and it's a cracker. So their ticket is 20 quid a year, and you can search for them on Facebook. Right, so I'm going to find a swim now, so once I get settled in, we'll take a look at some of my gear. Okay, so I've settled into a swim. Now let's have a look at the rods and reels I've got. Okay, so the rod is a Corum. 
they seem to be the people to go to for barbel gear these days and the rod itself is, I don't know whether you can see that twin tip plus is what it says now it's a dual tip rod so you've got the, the butt section and then the tip section there's two uh, one's 2.2 pound test curve and one's 1.75 pound test curve so you can swap between the two uh, I've got the 2.2s on today I'd rather be overgunned than undergunned uh, I also use the 2.2 as a floater rod as well for me carp fishing so that's a rod Corum twin tip actually really nice rods and you wouldn't think so for the twin tip but they're only 69.99 I was quite surprised at that you know it's not going to break the bank um, it's not a custom build you know it's a factory standard it's, it's not perfect but you know as a barbel rod these are brilliant okay so my reel is a Shimano bait runner now this is the old style GT 4500 bait runner it's one of my old carp reels and you'll find I do this a lot on my channel I recycle gear so I might buy it for a specific purpose like carp fishing for these originally these are well, 30 years old now but I'll also use them for other species as well obviously I've bought big pit reels these are going spare instead of spending more money I use these instead of buying new reels but if I was going to buy new reels today I would go for the GTs but I'd go for the 3500 size because they're smaller so they're lighter, easier to carry and you know, you're fishing a river, you're not fishing far out so you don't need a big reel anyway so uh, the smaller model is uh, more compact and probably better suited to barbel fishing but I'll recycle where I can you know, save money is my motto and the GT 4500s, you know, they might be a little bit overgunned but they're okay, they do the job now, the real line £12 now, this is Pro Clear. Now, for those of you who go carp fishing, you may recognise Pro Clear. It's a dedicated casting line, really, really thin diameter. Um, it's the stuff I use when I want to cast over 150 yards. Um, I think at £16, it comes in as something like 0.34 of a millimetre. It's really thin. And this is the, this is the £12 version. Again, it's thin, so it doesn't get caught in the current so much. There's a little less resistance so it lends itself ideally to barbel fishing um, I don't know many barbel anglers who use it but for me it was absolutely perfect so pro clear in £12 for me barbel fishing and that's what's on these reels so that's the rod and reel combination uh, I've got a pair, one's already fishing this one I'm about to set up um, after that it's just a cage feeder and the fluorocarbon pellet rig that I use now I'll put a link to that at the end of this video and to another video called Barbel Fishing on the River Seven. and have a watch of those because they cover my ground bait and my bait that I use and how I go about baiting my swim and the rig I use as well they've both got the fluorocarbon pellet rig in so have a look at my other videos at the end of this one and you can see the rig and the way I use my bait as well Okay, but that's a general setup, and I've got myself on a nice slow stretch at the moment. I've found that gentle walking pace water that I like. Uh, I've baited up, I'm using pellets today, but if you're new to barbel fishing, you know, it's pellets, luncheon meat, and sweet corn are probably the three main baits for barbel. Um, take all three, would you? Uh, I've not taken my own advice today, I've just brought pellets, <laughs> but hopefully they'll, they'll work. Um, they've never failed me anywhere I've taken them so hopefully this evening we'll get a bite or two and I'll be able to show you the barbel on the bank ok so that's it for now I'm going to set this up and I'm going to get myself fishing with this rod as well as the other one and then I'm going to sit back stay quiet and hopefully a barbel will come in and start feeding on my bait and pick me hook bait up so until later I'll see you in a bit
Okay, so you've seen me rods and reels. So let's have a look at some of the other tackle I bring with me. Starting with me bucket. Okay, so this is me bait bucket. As you can see, loads of pellets in the bottom. Usually it's a bit more full than that, but it's running down at the moment. Um, also in here, I'll have a layer of pellets, and then I'll have a bag of ground bait. This is marine halibut ground bait. The dynamite, which is my favourite barbel ground bait. Uh, also in here, I've got a couple of tubs of hookers. These are spicy sausage pellets, and they are 16 mil, I think, 14 mil. Something like that. Can't remember. And smaller eights in the same. And they go in the bottom, also go in the bottom of my bucket goes my bait box which I use for mixing my ground bait. And uh, I've mixed a load of ground bait up and thrown it in and I've mixed another load and I'm fishing with this at the moment. I've mixed some into balls so I can put extra feed in if I think I need it but most of the time I'll just fill the feeder with what's in here and there's all kinds of pellets mixed in there and all. Uh, that will go in my box when I'm finished, when it's cleaned out. Now this is a Ridge Monkey bait bucket. They're actually quite expensive as bait buckets go. What they do have is these top trays, as you can see, and they, they fit on there and they have a lid of their own as well that I can put on top. And in these I have, that's a bait dropper, so you tie it to your line, put your feed in, it, it opens out, let me get it open, like that, you put your feed and your pellets in there and then you close the lid and close it like that and then you tie your line to there and when you drop it and you swim the weight at the bottom hits the bottom and it opens up and that allows you to get bait down the bottom in the current. Uh, it's great if you're fishing under your feet and you've got deep margins it's, uh, it's worthwhile using one of, one of, one of these instead of, uh, instead of a feeder. Uh, I've got various feeders in here, uh, some quite big some smaller, different weights and sizes. Now, because I'm fishing the River Seven, I've got up to four ounces in weight. Uh, I don't generally tend to carry anything heavier than that, but you may find on other rivers, you may need to carry something heavier. But I've just got an assortment of small feeders in there, not many. Uh, I don't really want to weigh myself down because I might have to walk quite a distance. So uh, I try and keep my gear as light as possible. Okay, so. The other one is full of all sorts of stuff. Um, super glue for gluing the pellets on. That's super glue gel, which is great because it doesn't drip everywhere. It's ideal. So uh, if you're using super glue, get the gel. It's new house a year or two ago. And uh, I found it's really good. A couple of tubes of that. Um, Brennan Suplex, £10, that's my fluorocarbon hook link that I'm using for tying my rigs. Um, there's a packet of super specialist hooks down there you can see. Um, some PVA mesh in case I want to mesh a bag to cast out. Um, these are quite useful. Meat screws from Corum. You just clip one onto a hair and then uh, you screw it into a piece of meat and you can be fishing lunch and meat in no time. They're actually really good then, so I'll put some of them in there as well. And uh, the other thing I've got that goes in here is a little fox mini box. This is the kind of thing you get in those fox boxes. Uh, it's only small, and if we open it up, we've got a couple of spare beads, um, swivels, clips and stuff like that. Only a small amount, and there's even a spare hook in there I think. Only, only a small amount, so I'm carrying minimum tackle 
can get away with really and that will go in there that will fit in there as well and like the feeders that fits in the bucket now with the lids all, all slapped on and all the gear put away that's everything I need to cast out in there you know I can tie rigs put a feeder on um, mix my bait up get my other baits out everything I need is in there the only thing that goes in my rucksack is the likes of food a flask my scales my camera some waterproofs in case it rains that's it really but everything comes out of the bucket and the bucket's really easy to carry you know you've got your rods and your buckets in one hand or your rods in one hand and your buckets in the other and everything else is on your back so it's very very easy to stay mobile with a system like this which is why I use it I've got one for me cart fishing as well this just happens to be me barbel one so yeah those rich monkey buckets for barbel fishers or barbel fishermen They're actually really good so yeah that's my tackle as you can see barbel fishing it's just about staying simple keeping it nice and easy running feeder ground bait pellets on the hook or sweet corn or luncheon meat it's, uh, it's nice easy fishing so that's a look at my gear hopefully I'll catch something today and we'll be back to have a look at the barbel I catch later on Well, there's my first barbel of the day. Damn near ripped the rod off its rest. They are brilliant sport. Let's get them on the bank and get them weighed. There we go. First seven barbel of the session. From that nice, smooth, steady flow. I've put down a bed of pellets with some ground bait in the feeder. And I've just sat on it, it's taken a couple of hours, just coming into the evening time. I got one indication that there was fish in the swim. I've been watching little nods on the rod tip off the small fish. One big massive pullover said something big is in the swim. And I was just about to recast, I thought, Do you know what, I'll give it another five minutes. And then the rod tip just got wrenched around by this little fella. So, barbel fishing on the seven. And barbel fishing in general, if you've never done it before, 
it's great fun. They really, really do fight. I can't tell you how much they run on that first run. They are incredibly strong fish for the size. I'm going to get this one back. And there's plenty of the evening left yet, so hopefully we'll be able to bag some more. Well, the light's slowly starting to fade. So I'm going to give it another 10 or 15 minutes and then call it a day, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this look at barbel fishing. If you're thinking of giving it a try, don't forget those slow flowing stretches, nice steady flow. It's all about the flow. And if you can find those areas and within those areas, look for any word that might be safe for the fish. So stream of weed, a snag in the river, um, overhanging bushes, um, anywhere where there's a bush gone in the water and there's slack flow behind it or a back eddy as it, as it flows backwards. Uh, anywhere like that will be areas to potentially hold barbel. Uh, the stretch you've seen me on today, the steady flowing water you've just seen, um, I've got stream of weed down the inside margin and I'm just fishing over the back of it. So that's where I've, I've caught that fish from. Uh, that little barbel by the way was £5.4 ounces, which is a great starter fish. So uh, if you want to give barbel fishing a go, by all means, check out the clubs I mentioned before, uh, the Lim River ticket, River and Canal ticket and Shrewsbury Angling Club. Um, they both got good stretches of water, both worth a look. So why not give barbel fishing a try? It's not difficult, if anything it's easier than carp fishing um, and it's great fun. So until next time, take care of yourself and I'll see you soon.